Welcome back to Love and Dubai show. This month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And ladies, this is your annual reminder to get checked. With us today is a friend of the show who joined us last year to share her story and is here again to continue to advocate and spread breast cancer awareness message. Welcome back to the show, Sharon Moss. How are you doing? Hi, thank you for having me. Not at all. I wasn't thank here last you. time, so I'm so excited to have you on the show today. Welcome back. So for those who missed the interview last time, could you just tell us who is Sharon Moss and a little bit more about you? So I was diagnosed with breast cancer in May last year. So I was 28 years old. Um, No family history, completely random. Um, I'm a teacher. So yeah, it was a bit bit of a shock. Um, But yeah, I'm now kind of a year and a bit out of that. So yeah. No family history. No. 28 years old. Mm -hmm. Out here teaching, I'm already like that. Already, <laughs> that already affects me, you know. Yeah, like, that's, yeah, it's scary. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, why did you get checked? So, um, I had been in the gym again, I didn't have any like signs or symptoms, like, I wasn't unwell. Um, I had been in the gym and just pulled my arm and went like that, and the bottom of my hand literally just like caught on a lump. Um, and you know, when you just think hmm, that maybe shouldn't be there, it just felt like a marble um, underneath mm-hmm. my skin. Uh, but you know, when just something is telling you like it shouldn't be there, so I was like, right, I'm just going to go and get it checked and thought just to rule anything out. Um, but the yeah, the doctors took it really seriously straight away. I had biopsies, ultrasounds, and then a mammogram. And then within two weeks, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Yeah. So, but I wasn't ill. I wasn't unwell. It was literally my only symptom, just a tiny, tiny lump. So. Wow. Yeah, very lucky, very, very lucky. So was it detected at a very early stage? Yes, so it was stage one, um, which it, it was so aggressive though. So the type that I had was the most aggressive type of breast cancer. Um, it's called triple negative. It's only 15% of breast cancers are triple negative. Um, and yeah, so it was it was so aggressive that had I have left that, like I may not have even been sat here today, like it could have been that bad. Um, but when I caught it, it was stage one, which someone was looking down on me to get that checked so yes oh my god can you um can you remember that moment because i just to feel well Mm -hmm. but then to be told that you Mm -hmm. have this uh this very aggressive cancer Mm -hmm. what were your feelings like at that time Well, my first reaction was like, how can I have cancer but not be ill? Because you think of someone with cancer and you think of someone being unwell. And obviously I wasn't. So one of my first things I said was, but I'm not ill. And I remember my doctor saying, but if you were ill, it would be too late. Like if you were ill, it would be a completely different story. Um, And then I was just more worried about like what my family were going to think. Because obviously they were back in England and I knew I would be fine. You know, I just wanted to get on with whatever I had to do. But then I was like, oh gosh, now I've got to tell like everyone at home and my family Mm. back at home. like how are they going to react um so yeah so it was kind of it was it was an interesting like situation and actually after they told me I was like okay so I need to go to work now and the doctors were like you're not going to work like we've just diagnosed you with cancer like do you mean like that day to, yeah that you were day. planning to go back yeah, to school yeah yeah like I had my so I had, teachers on. <laughs> I was literally like right I need to get I need to be there this afternoon and they were like you are not going to work but I just wanted to just get on with it you know like I couldn't believe it was happening so I was like right I just need to just get on with it so, so yeah. right after we diagnosed the treatment started mm-hmm. was Painful. How was the process and everything like? Um, it was. Do you know what? It actually wasn't too bad. Like a lot of people have said to me, like, "What does cancer feel like? Like, what does it feel when you have cancer?" And like, it chemo was hard. Obviously, like it does. You you don't feel necessarily well the whole time. But I I found it. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't as bad as what I thought it was going to be. You just kind of feel a bit like spaced out the whole time. Um. And but yeah, it, it's. It's, an, it, I can't, it's difficult to explain, actually, like, unless you've kind of done it. And some people are really, really unwell with chemo. But I was very lucky and I wasn't. So, yeah, I was okay. And just um, obviously as an expat, how mm-hmm. long have you been in Dubai? Uh, six years now. So the one thing we say about living here is that it, we have amazing opportunities, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. we're not with our family. Mm-hmm. So was it a decision to go through the healthcare system here? And what was that like for you? Well, I mm-hmm. the decision was kind of made for me because at that time it was COVID and everything. There was like, you know, the red lists and everything. Like there actually were no flights to get back. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if I wanted to go back, we probably... There could have been ways that we could have, have done it, but I just needed to start the treatment. So I kind of didn't really have a choice. It was like, get on with it here and just power through. So yeah, wow. but but I'm very thankful to have been here because the healthcare is amazing here and everything started so quick and the doctors are amazing and everything's just been 
fantastic. Like with chemo, I had my own little room and my friend used to come with me and I just used to think I was going to the spa every week, like just <laughs> sat there chilling. Like it was actually quite relaxing sometimes. So yeah, I was very, very grateful to be here really. Mm-hmm. Did the treatment affect your stamina? I'm sure it did, but like uh, once you, once the treatment was over, how long did it take for you to regain your stamina and like for you to just, um, you know, go back to your day-to-day activities mm-hmm. as normal? Mm-hmm. Well. I tried to like keep my life as normal as possible the, the whole way through. Um, but I, would, I had two lots of chemo and actually the second lot was was really hard and I, I didn't feel well at that point. And I tried to save my hair. Um, so I used to sit with ice on my head um, to try and save my hair. And I think when I came back, when I came in last time, my hair hadn't really fallen out, but it started to fall out like two with two sessions left to go. And actually that was the hardest part for me because I was then so conscious that my hair was falling out. So I definitely didn't feel myself like towards the end of chemo. Um, And then, but in terms of like be like feeling myself and kind of just getting I just kind of got on with it um but I'd say it's kind of only really now that I feel like my life is is completely back to normal because after I had radiotherapy as well I had chemo tablets so I only really finished everything in July so I feel like now it's kind of like it's done now I can put it behind me and move on so yeah it's only really been the last couple of months I've felt a hundred percent back to normal that's such great news because so, yeah. I was going to say you're sharing your story on Instagram and mm-hmm. you're 16 rounds of chemo mm-hmm. down you've had a lumpectomy mm-hmm. 30 rounds 30 rounds of radiotherapy eight rounds of so uh, yes yeah, so I had um, six months of chemo tablets as well so following that and yes. now you're done um, everything's done so yeah And your main message and why we're so grateful to have you on is spreading uh, breast cancer awareness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and But you've also shared your journey the whole way through. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, why did you decide to share your journey? May, well, to start with, it was actually just to kind of keep all of my friends and family back home, like in the know of what was going on. But then obviously I realized that Just, you can spread so much awareness on Instagram and the people you reach on Instagram and help so many people. And I think I, when I was first diagnosed, I went on Instagram to find people who had come out the other side. And then I was like, oh, hang on, like I can do that for other people as mm. well. And I get so many messages where people say like, they because they've been able to see how like my whole journey it makes it less scary for them because they can see kind of what's coming in because my story was very positive it just kind of sets people up on the right mm-hmm. foot to to kind of yeah start start their journey so and also just to spread that awareness that you know it can happen to anyone like I was a teacher living my normal life like 28 years old and then all of a sudden I had cancer like it can literally if it happened to me it can happen to anyone And early detection yeah. is so, so important. So important. And mm-hmm. like, if you think there is something wrong or isn't right, just go and get it checked. I just think even if it even if it turns out to be nothing, like at least that's peace of mind for you. But if I hadn't have got that checked, like I say, like I probably wouldn't be sitting here now, which is a scary, scary thought. So just get things checked and yeah. So it's so amazing that you finished these treatments and you've come out on the other side strong and well and good. But what have the doctors advised? Have they uh, are they telling you like to come back for regular checkups? Is it something that can come up again? Is there a possibility of that? Yeah. So hopefully I should be fine because the main thing that you can kind of do to prevent it coming back is to catch it so early. So because I caught it at stage one, obviously that's kind of the biggest help that I can give to myself. Um, But they've just said things like having a healthy lifestyle. Stress is a massive like contributor. Obviously as a teacher, it's quite a stressful job. So just making sure like I'm not getting myself stressed, enough sleep, healthy lifestyle. um, And I have three month checkup. Ups, um, where I have like an ultrasound and my blood's taken and things so they're keeping an eye on it just in case but hopefully I should be fine it's a hard one the stress it's like I know. How, do you, how do you control that <laughs> um but what you were saying about getting checked so it is breast cancer right this month there's a pink caravan going around the city mm-hmm. it's going to be at raw coffee on Sunday the 31st from 10 a.m to 4 p.m I'm going to be there may as well get myself checked because I I actually haven't before now I'm thinking I'm at the age I'm 33 and it's like should have done this Mm -hmm. a few years ago. Um, But what were the helpful Dubai resources for you throughout the time? Like, you know, was there, um, were there helpful resources that you could kind of like check out for information or great hospitals or what Mm -hmm. would you recommend? So I basically, I just Googled kind of where to go and then, um, yeah, found my hospital. But like you say, there is the Pink Caravan and the Al Jalila Foundation, like they do a lot of things around breast cancer awareness. Like there's a center for women um, and things and um, all of the hospitals, like you can see that they've got like different centers for breast cancer. So there is, there is a lot, a lot around Dubai that you can kind of go to for 
for help. Mm-hmm. Um, it was amazing that you shared your story again. So thank you so much. Um, guys, that was Sharon Moss. And how can people find you on Instagram? Because I think it's important that you, she's documented everything and it, yes. it's been an emotional journey following you. Um, love your story, love your positivity throughout all of it. So thank you for sharing thank it. You. How can people find us? So my Instagram is Sean Knows Breast. and those breasts yes. okay guys breast cancer awareness month that was sean moss thank you thank so much you. for sharing your story um enjoy your half term you're off you. to armenia yes can't wait don't Ooh. make us tell us <laughs> <laughs> guys that is it for us on the love of dubai show we're back with you every single weekday morning goodbye for me goodbye for me see ya